Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we are going to be doing the Firebug uh, Advanced Loadout Guide. So, for this, we're going to be going over two or three-ish builds for Firebug, and then we're going to be going over five loadouts for Firebug. This is to help people that have already played Firebug quite a bit, or played these other classes quite a bit, or just want to have some more inspiration to try different loadouts. So the first build that I'm going to go over is more of the ground fire build. This is going to be focused on weapons like the Scorcher, the, uh, well, sort of the Scorcher, the Flamethrower, the Cock and Burn, the Microwave Gun, um, anything that can cause floor fires, this is mostly what it's going to be for. The reason why I didn't say the Scorcher all the way is mostly because of this level 5 perk. So at level 5, we're going to go with high capacity fuel tanks. This makes it so we have 100% uh, more fuel or larger magazines with our weapons. This does not affect the Scorcher, which is why you shouldn't take it if you're going to take the Scorcher. Um, assuming you're going to throw upgrades into the Scorcher and the Scorcher isn't just like an afterthought to whatever your loadout's going to be. So this just gives you double the ammo. Um, both level fives are actually quite good. Increased base damage of fire by 35% is also quite good. You could take this, uh, with certain weapons like the Spitfires if you wanted to, since the Spitfires don't necessarily need a larger magazine. They can get by just with the 12 rounds that they have. Uh, this is also the build I would recommend starting out each time you play Firebug, specifically with the level 10 perk here, which is Ground Fire. Ground Fire makes it so Ground Fires deal three times more damage to enemies and slow uh, Zeds by 30% when they step on the fire. This is fantastic for the Cock and Burn, which is what you're always going to start out with, so it makes the most sense to take it uh, early on. However, you can switch it later on depending on your loadout, and we'll talk about that in the second build. For this build, it'll stay the same with Ground Fire. This build is only really good for weapons that can cause, that can cause the Ground Fire. So the Cock and Burn, the Spitfires, the Scorcher... Uh, the trench gun, or sorry, the dragon's breath, uh, microwave gun, flamethrower, um, and the husk cannon, I believe, can all cause ground fire. Weapons like the MAC-10 and the Helios rifle cannot cause the ground fire, so if you're going with weapons like that, I wouldn't recommend taking it, um, at least all the time. For level 15, we're going to go with Zed Trapmel. This just makes it so when we kill a Zed, we have a 30% chance of that Zed exploding, stunning all Zeds around him and dealing more damage. This is great because Firebug does extremely well in crowds. Um, and grouping enemies together with the fire is fairly easy. The fire can spread a lot and it can uh, cause multiple Zed explosions to, or sorry, Zed shrapnels to go off to uh, stun all the other Zeds around them. Very good. Uh, and then at level 20, we're going to go with Heat Wave. Heat Wave is pretty much always better than Firestorm. Firestorm is really not a great choice. Uh, Heat Wave makes it so if you strike a Zed at point blank range, then you can push him away. Point blank range isn't really like if the Z is right on the muzzle of your gun. Uh, point blank range has kind of a cone in front of it that counts as point blank range, or it has the entire length of a stream from a weapon like the microwave gun, the flamethrower, the cock and burn, something like that. So if you hit them with any part of that, that would count as point blank range and you can push them out of the way. This ability right here makes it so firebug alone can get out of pretty much any situation that's bad. Uh, it makes it so you can also your team can hold up in much more risky locations if you're running this perk because Firebug can just push everybody out uh, and then your whole team can just follow behind them. And then at level 25, I generally go with Pyromaniac. This makes it so that you have unlimited ammo uh, and you can fire in real time during Zed time. This is fantastic for almost all of Firebug's weapons. Um, you can go with Inferno if you want. Inferno is better if you've already lit a bunch of Zeds on fire. Uh, this way it slows them down and does more damage over time. This is better for weapons that um, don't necessarily benefit from the infinite ammo, like the flamethrower, the cock and burn, the microwave gun. It's more for them, but even those ones can make use of Pyromaniac. The Pyromaniac is pretty much the better option for all weapons most of the time, in my opinion. Now, with the second build for Firebug, um, once again, you can go with high capacity fuel tanks if you would like. Uh, once again, unless you're running like uh, the Scorcher and then probably don't go with Barbecue. Uh, you can keep Zed Shrammel or you can go with Napalm to burn things that so your burns do more damage over time. Uh, keep Heat Wave and then go with Pyromaniac again. With Barbecue, instead of Ground Fire, you're going to be going with weapons like the Helios Rifle and the MAC-10 as well as potentially the HRG uh, Fire M16. Because you can still cause ground fires with the Fire M16, and it is pretty good, but um, if you're not using the grenades a whole lot, then just barbecue would be better to do more damage. 
Um, and then really the third build is honestly just going with like bring the heat instead. And this is just to maximize your damage with these weapons. Um, things like the Helios rifle or uh, Spitfires can do just fine. The Fire M16 or the uh, MAC-10 can also do just fine. Even the Flamethrower can actually do pretty fine with that if you want to go with something like this. But this is the build I'd recommend right away. And then if you're going to switch over to the Helios rifle or switch over to the Scorcher or something, switch appropriately. All right. So starting up with Firebug, we of course have our Cock and Burn here. Uh, you could be running the Bring the Heat and then you'd have 50 rounds in it. If you're bringing the, the uh, larger tanks, then you have 100 rounds in it. This weapon is actually one of the best starting weapons for Firebug once you have ground fires. Um, you can kill pretty much anything with it very quickly, at least in early waves, on any difficulty. You probably have either the easiest or the second easiest um early game the only class i would consider having a potentially easier early game would be swat since swat starts out with so many more bonuses than firebug does so you are extremely strong in the early waves your molotovs are also really strong if you find any choke points where you could throw them or zeds have to walk through them then you can do that and you can rack up a lot of kills. You can keep the cock and burn for quite a while as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend throwing upgrades into the cock and burn at all. It doesn't scale very well with upgrades. It doesn't give you that much more of a bonus, but you can save up quite a lot of money. All right, so the first build that I would recommend for Firebug is this loadout. It's a pretty simple general loadout. This is going with the flamethrower and the Hust cannon. For this, I would recommend uh, these perks with high capacity fuel tanks, ground fire, Zed trap mill, heat wave, and then uh, either pyromaniac or inferno. It's your choice. This uh, gives you a lot of fuel with the flamethrower and with the husk cannon. You can use both of them fairly well against most enemies. Um, you can't throw upgrades into this loadout. It doesn't need them though. The flamethrower is absolutely fantastic at destroying any sort of small enemies, and the husk cannon is great at killing any of the large enemies. The only zeds this loadout isn't as good against are really just scrakes. Um, the husk cannon is very strong against flesh pounds. Uh, that being said though, you can still use the husk cannon to injure scrakes quite a bit. It still does enough damage so that you can solo them, even in a team uh, setting. Simply charge up that. All the rest of the time, I'd recommend you just using the flamethrower. Abuse the ground fire quite a bit if you need to, you know, create your safety circle of fire. It's surprising how well that works in a lot of areas. Um, just try not to make yourself dizzy with it. That's the worst. But you have a lot of fuel, so you likely won't have to reload too often. With this, you can push through just about any sort of area with the flamethrower. And I'd recommend you having the flamethrower out most of the time. Use the flamethrower for small enemies and medium enemies. Use the uh, husk cannon for any sort of large enemies or even medium enemies too. It works well against either of them or if enemies are in a great range. As you can see, it does do a lot of damage towards flesh pounds. The second loadout I would recommend is the uh, Helios rifle with really whatever else you want. I took the Fire M16, but you could take the Dragon's Breath. You could take the uh, Spitfires. You could take the Mac-10, um, whatever you'd like. You can throw upgrades into your secondary. You can't throw any upgrades into the uh, Helios rifle. For this, I'd recommend just using the Helios rifle pretty much against everything. It works just fine. Um, or switch into your secondary to kill small enemies. Um, for this, though, I am running different perks with uh, Barbecue, then. Uh, that's the only difference in this build, because the Helios Rifle cannot take advantage of ground fires. With the uh, Fire M16, you can do ground fires, but it's not necessary. Um, I mostly just want this for the primary fire, for killing small enemies and running around with. Uh, either when I run out of ammo with my Helios rifle, or just when I um, am trying not to run out of ammo with my Helios rifle. This has also been referred to, at least whenever I've streamed by Jackheart, as the spicy commando loadout. And it is quite good. You do a lot of damage with it. You can fight pretty much anything with the Helios rifle. It's strong towards all enemies, uh, as it does microwave damage and enough base damage to just kill small enemies that don't have any armor on them or any metal on them. Uh, for large enemies like Scrakes and Flesh Pounds, you can also use it just fine against them. It kills them fairly quickly. If you're used to playing Commando or SWAT or anybody that 
has guns similar to this, then you'll be pretty familiar with this loadout. It won't feel really out of the ordinary. It also works pretty well against all the bosses, especially the Matriarch, because the Helios rifle does a lot of damage towards the EDRs. All right, so for the third loadout, I recommend the Cock and Burn unupgraded and the Microwave Gun with one upgrade. Uh, you could, instead of going with the Cock and Burn, go with either the Dual Spitfires or the Mac 10 or the Scorcher. All of those work fine too. I actually usually take it more with the Scorcher, but the Cock and Burn is a little bit more affordable. This is once again going with this loadout for high capacity magazines uh, or high capacity fuel tanks, ground fire, Zed Shrapnel, and Heat Wave. Use the Cock and Burn on any sort of small enemies and then save the microwave gun for either once you run out of fuel with the Cock and Burn on small enemies and just use the primary fire on them. Uh, pretty much just like this. You can use them exactly the same way just by spraying them near the feet of the enemies or hitting the feet of the enemies. This is a really strong loadout against robots because it kills them quite fast. This doesn't require the best aim either, and it's very easy to push yourself out of a situation with this because you have two weapons that can push enemies away if you're running this particular build. If you're going with like the Scorcher, not so much. Uh, you do have the secondary fire of the microwave gun though, which is fantastic against uh, flesh pounds in particular. It's good against pretty much anything, but this build is excellent for zoning. You can zone enemies away from your team very easily with it, both by using its primary fire and its secondary fire, either to push enemies back like this, or to use the secondary fire to actually physically push them. The secondary fire does count as explosive damage, that's why it does so well against Flesh Pounds, because they're weak to microwave damage and explosive damage, and this combines both of those. This weapon's also fairly strong against Scrakes. Uh, the only real downside to this particular loadout is if you run out of fuel with the microwave gun. Um, and you're forced to just use your secondary, whether that be the Scorch or the Cock and Burn, the Mac-10, Spitfires, whatever it might be. Uh, Mac-10 wouldn't be the best because you don't get the advantage from ground fires, but it wouldn't be bad. The fourth loadout I'd recommend for Firebug is a very cheap loadout. You can get it early on. That's going with the dual Spitfires and with the Dragon's Breath. For this, once again, I would recommend going with high capacity fuel tanks for the extra rounds in the shotgun. Ground fires, because both these weapons make excellent use of the ground fire, Zed Shrapnel, uh, Heat Wave, and then once again Pyromaniac. This is a crowd control loadout that's very good at range. Um, the ground fires are incredibly strong against almost all enemies except for large enemies. This loadout is weak to large enemies. You're not going to be as strong against uh, strikes and flesh pounds. Because your best weapon for fighting them is this, which is an okay weapon, but it's not as good as some of your others, like the Helios Rifle or the Microwave Gun. Uh, for this, you do have a lot of extra ammo, though. You could also even pair this with something like the uh, Mac-10, too, if you wanted another weapon uh, for extra extra ammo. You could also go with the Medic weapon, like the Medic Pistol, or even the Medic uh, SMG. And then the last loadout I'd recommend for Firebug is another Area of Denial loadout uh, for a lot of AoE damage. This is going with uh, Bring the Heat, Ground Fire, Zed Trap Metal, uh, Heat Wave once again, and then Pyromaniac. This is going with the HRG Scorcher and the Dual Spitfires. Now, as you can see, I actually have extra ammo in my Spitfires because I had a holdover from the larger ammo uh, reserves. You can actually do that for the first wave of uh, anybody that actually has a increased ammo capacity perk. So you can switch to that, reload your weapons, then switch off it for when the wave actually starts. That way you'll get that first clip with extra ammo. Um, so that's a little bit of a useful hint. This one pretty much you want to be using the secondary fire on the Scorcher a lot. That way you're just causing constant ground fires for the enemies to walk through. This functions very similar to the Spitfire and uh, Dragon's Breath build. Against larger enemies though, you can use the primary fire of the Scorcher. It does quite well against armored enemies like Flesh Pounds and, well right here, it's working pretty well against the Abomination. Uh, with the secondary fire, you can create pretty safe zones, especially if you're hugging a wall like this where enemies have to pretty much run down the wall to get to you. And if you're laying constant fire, it's going to be more difficult for them to do this. Once again, this loadout is extremely strong against um, waves of small enemies. It's not the strongest against large enemies. 
you do have a problem against strikes and flesh pounds. You're not going to be able to kill them very quickly. Um, you can deal quite a bit of damage over time, and it's pretty strong against certain enemies, uh, and even bosses like the Abomination here. It's also quite strong against Hans. Hans does not like fire either. So if you can get him to stagger from the Spitfires or from the uh, Scorcher, and then throw Molotovs at him, you can actually kill him surprisingly quick. Alright, so that's the Advanced Firebug Guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so very much for coming here and watching it. I really do appreciate that. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. The next Advanced Guide we're going to do is probably for Gunslinger, uh, which should be a lot of fun because Gunslinger is a very fun class to play. Uh, as a reminder to everybody, I do stream every day except for Mondays and Thursdays. I stream here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch and Facebook, so you can catch me at any of those locations. Thank you once again for watching, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye!